Should we control for that? It doesn't matter. This is where your prioritization comes in. If you asked your client the, how important was that the lunch was eaten in a particular way, they may actually say, no, no, the most important thing is the client gets what they need. So that's priority one. What sequence they eat it in, maybe lower down. Controlling for whether they eat salad and ice cream may be low priority or actually irrelevant and you can close that as a requirement. And being able to close things off when the client puts them up against the prioritization and says, actually, this one really doesn't matter at all. Let's close it. And there's one thing you don't have to deliver. Yes. <laughs> Any idea what's going on in this? Yes. Measuring to see if he can get his backhoe in there and take the ATM. <laughs> this, kit, this was in a newspaper, printed in a newspaper in New Zealand. The police were very interested in finding this man. <laughs> this picture was taken from a security camera at night outside the automatic bank machine. Turned out he was a builder who has to install a glass door. They're going to put a security cubicle around it. And he was running late and he only got there at night. <laughs> so <laughs> always check with your client when something looks bizarre. Yes. Don't leap to conclusions. Check what it is they're actually doing. Going through the prioritization and reviewing as you go through your project. So we've talked about prioritizing. But one of the very important things is to make sure they know that the prioritization is not to de-scope. Although that will happen, as we've just talked about. It will, those things will drop off. But you don't tell that to the client. It will just become obvious as you're using it. It means that you can talk to them about focusing on what's really important. That you can focus your time. That you can make sure that you deliver to what they really need. Review, review, review. That's something I think sometimes we get so busy on doing that going back through it with the client, sometimes phasing your delivery is actually really valuable because you give them the key things first and then other things come out of that. If you can build that in to your pricing with your client, particularly if they've not done anything like this before, or if they are a client who are prone to change. For example, government sector. All of a sudden the minister announces something new and you have to do it. And you have to do it within a certain time frame. So our project, we phase the deliverables. Halfway through the first stage, the minister announces that we're stopping one program and we're starting another completely different one with a completely different target audience with a completely different schedule and we had to incorporate that quickly. So actually building in review points meant that we were able to do that. Um, and build it in, uh, make sure that you have the communication and the connections across interrelated companies. So if you are working with a storage um, and uh, hosted facility, make sure you build in review points with them during the project so you can see how it is shaping up, where it's coming to. Um, communications uh, companies, include them as well. Don't just keep it to the client, keep it the broader context of things. Once you have your prioritization process that the client's already agreed to about how to identify the critical, most important things, you can apply that to defects as well. It helps to defocus the client from the really niggly, tiny, little, actually will anyone spot this type defect. <coughs> it doesn't mean that you don't do that, but it means that you can actually get your project through and live, perhaps with some of those things undelivered and coming at a later point once anything else that's come up has been identified. So you can be really fast on delivering to the client priorities. This is how you satisfy them. 
this is how you get them thinking you're the best thing in the world, is when they see the things that are dearest to their heart <coughs> coming fast. And that includes the defects. Things that are... Um, the real benefits to them, we talked earlier about the benefits, uh, the things that are actually changing the nature of their business, they're usually delivered in that final 10% of the development. You get all of the background and all of the things that you need and all of the fundamental functions, but if the last pieces are not in place, it's often those things that will turn their clients away. And so they will not see the benefit of the increased sales, of the increased brand and promotion and awareness if that last 10% is not right. So again, where your prioritization is on your defects, you get to how to, um, you will see how to focus on those defects that are part of this final 10%. What's going to turn away the end client? We've talked about using phasing of delivery. The next one, learn how to say no so that your clients hear yes. This is a really key thing. They, we're near the end. And this is where the done but comes in. We're done. But I wanted this one to be in green if they were viewing from, uh, from, from the Netherlands. And in blue if they are viewing from Sweden. And in, again, it comes back to the prioritisation. You can bring that up. But it's also about, well, is there another way that we can do that? So when, when the client gives you this but... I want this. If it's something easy, sure, you can do it, but typically these things can be complex, hard, they can mean that you're looking at your code and thinking, I'm going to have to rewrite a whole chunk of this. What you want to do is find out what is the purpose of that? And the purpose is that they wanted the client to feel more engaged. Well, can we do it another way? I know we could pop something in, you know, a widget or something in there. And, and you find another way to do the same thing that may take a fraction of it when you understand why they wanted that. So when you're getting down to those final things, spend that time with the client to understand why they wanted that. And think laterally. Bring in other people, get other ideas, get on the chat system, find out who can do this, how can we do it easier? I don't want to have to rewrite the whole thing. Be really, really thorough in testing. And again, this is one thing, when you've been seeing this for so long, sometimes you can't see what's right in front of you. <coughs> Even getting a colleague, a friend, a spouse, wives are really good for this, girlfriends, partners, you say, go and have a browse through the system and tell me if you find anything that looks strange. You know, what page doesn't work or what thing doesn't display properly, particularly people's different browsers if you're using browser-based stuff. You know, it's very easy to, to get you fixated on the ones that you use all the time and maybe do some spot testing on another one. But if someone has their browser that they constantly use, you want to make sure that they go and look through your system and make sure there isn't anything that's going to trip up. Because dollars to donuts, your client's going to have a client who uses that browser who's going to come back and say, well, it's broken, it doesn't work. Be upfront about defects, and it actually helps to have that, um, to, to, for your client to hear the things that you've found in your own testing. What that does is it sells them on the fact that you have tested. It sells them on the fact that your time has been well spent on your project and the money that they're paying you is actually value for money that they're getting to see that you've been um, looking through and doing this. It also says that you're committed to honesty and integrity and delivering a high quality product. These things will make them very happy. Don't be afraid to warranty your work. To say if you find something in the you know, 90 days after it's put in, it's all good. I'll fix it for you. No charge. Um, there will be a bit of give and take in that in your own financials, but it's typically much cheaper to spend a few hours on fixing those defects or the things that have been found to not work as specified than it is to have a dissatisfied customer.